Donna Dewberry. I'm really excited to have you with me to learn my one-stroke technique, and there's some real important things that you need to know before you can do the technique properly. The first thing I want to show you is the folk art paint and how important it is that you use this thick, creamy paint so that you get really good shading and blending with my technique. And what's real important is that it's real thick and it's not, you know, it doesn't have that thin, watery look. So it's going to show the blending as you do it without any effort. You're going to love it. And then I have my one-stroke brushes. And there's a set of brushes. There's three in the set. You have a large three-quarter inch flat, a number 12 flat, and a script liner. I'm going to show you those and tell you what, how, what's the important um, points on those brushes. And then my scruffy brush, which is really great. It's going to be one of your favorites. And then what we've got for you are three basic beginner guides of the strokes that I'm going to teach you during this video. First thing you need to do is to load your palette properly. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pick up the wicker white, put about a quarter nickel or a quarter size of paint, use lots of paint, not your little teeny little dabs like you're used to maybe. And then your green forest, it's one of my favorite colors. All right. And now to load the brush, it's really important, makes a big difference, learning what's not enough or too much paint. And that's what we're going to practice until you understand that really well. These are the three brushes. I want to show them to you close up so you understand what we've got here. We have flat brushes with a really good chisel edge. These flat brushes are the key to my technique. They have a real good chisel edge down here. If you're a new painter, this edge down at the bottom is the chisel edge. And then this is my number 12 flat. Long bristles, real important. And they're not really thick. They're just right, so they hold just enough paint. And then my number two script liner. It's long enough to hold a lot of paint, make really pretty curly cues, and to make nice detail. So let's load the large three-quarter inch brush first so that you can visually see really well how to load this brush. Most important thing, I'm going to really stress, I want you to watch me very closely. We're going to pick up on one corner the wicker white, like a triangle of color, green force on the other corner, okay? Then we're going to sweep back and forth. See how hard I'm pushing those bristles? That is very important. Almost down to the ferrule. If you're a new painter, this part right here is the ferrule. So you pick up paint again in the same location. See how my white stroking over my white and my green force over my green force. About two to three times at least to fill those bristles. Now what I'm trying to do is to pack the inside of those bristles so full of paint that as I'm painting it's going to feel real smooth like butter when you're stroking if it's loaded properly. Now, if you don't have enough paint inside the bristles, the bristles will split while you're painting. So if you see those bristles split, you remember, I don't have enough paint in that brush, inside the brush, okay? Now, this brush should look two-thirds full of paint when it's loaded properly. Now, if you look at that really good, and if you're painting, it's not painting well, look down, see if it's two-thirds full, see if there's enough paint in it, all right? From this point on, we don't sweep at all anymore loading that brush. From this point on, we gently put each corner into the color we're using and then paint. We pick up paint and then paint. Almost every stroke you pick up paint as you're, as you're painting your project. And that's how you keep that fresh blending, shading, and highlighting. And that happens all in each stroke that you paint. All right, same thing with the number 12 flat brush. So I don't need to have show you how to load that because it's basically the same. Now, when we're doing the script liner, this is the only time you use water. If you notice, when I was loading the brush before, there was no water. Very important. That's why you don't want to thin paint. Now, when you're going to pick up to do the script liner, you go into water, come to the edge of your puddle of paint, pick up again. Two to three times you dip into water. Now, you are not in the middle here. This is absolutely not what you want to do. You want to come out to the side and make an inky consistency. You want to roll your brush in the paint, pull out of it so you have a nice tip without a drip. And you have to pull out of it for that to happen, OK? Now, that's loading your script liner. Now, I have another brush that's really fun, and that's my scruffy. When you pull the scruffy brush out of the package, you take and push it into the palm of your hand and really twist it hard. 
At this point, you fan those bristles out. Now, the flat brushes in the script liner are synthetic nylon bristles. This is natural bristles. Now, when you clean this brush out, you're going to pounce that into the water instead of raking back and forth. And you're also going to not paint with this brush with water on it. It's got to be dry when you're painting. And so if you've got it wet, you push it down into your paper towel and really go back and forth to dry it all out. Now, you might lose a few bristles at the beginning, but that's natural, so don't panic about that. It's really important that you get this all worn out and feathered out, and that's how you store this brush. Now, to load this brush, you're going to load this brush separate in a different way than you loaded your other flat brushes. We're going to pounce this brush straight up and down into the paint. We're going to pounce in one end of the brush into the white, pouncing very hard. See, I'm pushing very hard down on that bristles, those bristles. And then I'm going to pounce the other end of that brush into dark green. And you can choose any color. This is fun for mossing and for doing wisteria if you use the purple and the white. So you pounce, pounce. And let me pull one of these teaching guides and show you really quick. This is really fun. So when you're pouncing on this, on, on your surface, you're going to move that brush around and see all the blending and shading you get. Now when I'm doing that, I'm pouncing hard too. That's a real fun brush. Now when you want to add another color, you just pounce it into brown also or to yellow also. It's really fun. We'll show you more of that later. Now, what I want to do is show you my teaching guides and how important these guides are. These guides are made to be wiped off, practice, wipe off over and over like I'm doing here. On the first teaching guide that we're going to go over, it's a reusable color blending sheet. And we have I've laid the different colors on here to show you how you achieve the blending as you do the strokes. So let's start out with the green and white because that's the color I've already got on my palette. And show you on here, if we pick up the white and the green, this brush is already loaded, so I'm just kind of blending it in. Pick up each color on the corner. And I want you to stroke back and forth a few times here. Not back and forth. We're just going to pull straight down so you can see the blending. Now, what's wonderful is that you're going to get this dark green forest all the way blended to the white. And see the nice blending that goes from side to side? Now, if you don't have that brush loaded properly, you might get a really heavy white and green. Now, you don't want it to be like that. You want to have it loaded properly in that brush, picking up a tip of each corner. And then when you're stroking across there, it's going to be a nice graduating shading, okay? Now, to add one more color to that, which is really fun, is we're going to add some yellow, the school brush yellow, and it's wonderful to see the brightness that will come in just by adding a little bit of another color. Now, my brush is already loaded with the wick of white and the green forest. At this point, I'm just going to tip the corner of my brush into a little bit of yellow. Now, when I'm stroking across here, I'm going to come in here and have the blending from the dark green. See the blending that I'm getting? from the dark green to the yellow. I'm mostly just pulling towards myself. 
But the most important thing about this stroke is that you're pulling the white towards you when you're on the chisel edge. Remember to always do that. Leave with the lighter color when you're on the chisel edge. Okay, now on this stroke, I'm standing on the chisel edge. I'm pushing, making like a C motion and coming back on the chisel. So you slide, push, slide back on the chisel. That's really important that you start and end that way. Now let's go over here to the next petal. I'm going to use the berry wine and the wicker white on this. And this stroke starts here. Push, lift to the chisel, but do not come up, and slide the white edge as you're going down. Be sure that your brush is two-thirds loaded with paint, and be sure your bristles are doing your movement, and the handle of your brush is straight up and down. All right, same thing with the next three strokes we're doing here. We're standing on the chisel, we're pushing, this time we're wiggling slightly. See that movement? Our bristles spread really far out. We're standing on the chisel, and we are sliding down as we go. You might want to replay this over and over till you understand this stroke, because I know I'm moving a little quick on this stroke, but these strokes are real important that you watch the bristles, the handle, and the paint color that you're getting as you're blending. Okay, now the next row here. This one has got a little trick to this movement. I want you to watch really close. We're standing on the chisel. We are pushing. We're lifting to the point on the chisel. Push, lift to the point, and push as you turn to the next point. So it's push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. Then on the other side of this, you're just moving your hand the other direction and practicing the same stroke. Now the next petal I really love because this is a really good technique petal. You learn a lot of pressure. You start on the chisel. I'm going to pick up more white. I want the white on the outer edge. I take a little stroke there at the beginning, push very hard. I'm pivoting the berry wine edge and wiggling the white edge. You start on the chisel, push, make little M's with the white, pivot the berry wine, stand to the chisel, and lift. You're supposed to have a seashell shape there when you get through. That's what it's supposed to look like. Remember that you always put the color I have up, the lighter colors up, and the darker colors down. You're also, you have the teacher strokes right at home with you so you don't forget. You're standing on the chisel, you're pushing very hard, and you're lifting to the chisel. A real important thing I'm not doing here, and I want you to be sure to do this at home, is that you wipe off these and you repaint and you practice over and over just like that. Now, that's the first two strokes. I'm going up over the hill. And the second stroke of those two strokes is right here. You start on the chisel, push the bristles, and lift to the chisel. And this looks like a U to me. If you're watching the wide ed edge of this brush, on this one it went up over the hill, on this one it made a U. Now, this is fun because this is like the sunflower petal. I use this for a lot of flower petals. It's the same motion as one of the leaf strokes that we're going to do. You stand up on the chisel, push, turn, and lift. Push, turn, lift. But when you're turning, you're just slightly turning to the tip t goes towards the point. Now, the next stroke that we're going to do is one that I do the little five-petal flower. And I call it kind of like a teardrop because you stand on the chisel, you push, make the bristles, make the curve, and slide back to the chisel. So you stand up, push those bristles, watch my handle, watch my bristles, and slide back down. And practice those. That's one you really have to practice that turns out really cute and quick. Lots of shading. The more pressure lifting, the more shading. Now, the next stroke here is like we did on the chisel edge, but we're going to push harder this time. So you push really hard, see my bristles, and you lift. I'm leading with that lighter color again. Remember, push, lift. Now let's turn it over and work on the other side. Oh, this one's great. I use this a lot, like on an orchid or an iris. But I want you to take any flower that you see, and I want you to take each petal, look at the flower, and figure out which petal would be the ones that would look like the flower you want to paint. You start on the chisel, you push, you wiggle. See how hard I'm pushing? You stand up on the chisel and flip. See how I'm slightly flipping that brush? Push, wiggle. 
stand up and lift. What's real important is that when you're first starting my strokes, I tell you on the first couple of strokes, to go very slow on top of my stroke and then push, wiggle, lift. And then as you go faster, you'll pick up the stroke a lot smoother, but at the beginning, go really slow so you get that stroke. Now the next one I really like is I want to show you when you're doing this, I really like that you can see that you are watching the very wine edge of this stroke and going in and out and pull back down. See how pretty that shading is? But what's happening in one stroke, you're going up, over, in, and around. Just practice that one. You'll like that. It's fun. Now here's another one where you're starting on your chisel again. See, I'm stopping in on those chisels, those straight black lines. Push, wiggle, 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 lift, and slide that chisel edge down. Then you need to turn the sheet upside down and practice that going all kinds of directions because they go in different directions around your flower. The last petal we're going to practice is on the chisel edge. It's a comma. Pulling that white, you push those bristles down and lift. And then you turn it on this side over here. Push and lift. Now, I would like you to pause your tape, and I want you to load your brush and just practice across my strokes as you do, as I've done on my, on my sheet, and practice until the strokes feel comfortable to you, okay? We are really exaggerating this. Watch. 
really zigzagging because little sunflower and daisy pet, uh, leaves are really lacy and rippled looking. So you really exaggerate, but still keeping the shape of that leaf. Now this little one I use as a little filler. You tilt your brush to, the, um, to an angle, but you're on the chisel edge. And you start on the chisel edge and slide and lift. That's as easy as it, as it is. You just stand, slide, and lift. Now here's a vine, more like a branch. When I'm making that, I stand slightly at an angle, not straight, slightly at an angle, push. The yellow is going first because my lighter edge should be going first, okay? That one's pretty simple. Y'all like practicing on that because that one's really easy. Now we're going to stand here, push, lift. This will look familiar to you guys. Push, lift, push, lift because this is kind of like that morning glory and you use that for poinsettias too. That's kind of tricky but it's pushing and lifting, pushing and lifting. See all the shading and all that you're getting? No water. Lots of blending and shading, but you didn't work hard to get it. Okay, now we're going to pick up the two colors. Now, I love this leaf. This is a leaf I use with my cabbage rose. I start at an angle, kind of like I've got a V here. I'm going to push very hard. I'm wiggling. The green edge is making like M's. The yellow edge is pivoting. I stop wiggling, and I stand up to the chisel. So do this with me when you're watching this tape. I want you to push, wiggle. Stop wiggling, stand up to the chisel, and slide. Now to do the other side, that's the other edge of that V. Remember this V here, I said push, wiggle, and lift. Now you can turn this sheet so it's comfortable for you. And also remember that if you're left-handed, you would turn this sheet upside down and work from the right to the left, and it makes it really simple for you to do. All right, and that way you won't be laying your hand on top of the wet paint either. Now here's one everybody loves when they see me doing it. It's push, wiggle, lift. You see that stroke on the other side. But then you drag that chisel edge back through. Now push, wiggle, lift. You do not lift all the way up. And you come back through the center of the leaf. So it makes your vine, your leaf, and your stem all in one stroke. Same thing on this next half here. What we've done is just push, turn, lift, and pull back through instead of wiggling. So that's real fun. Practice that. You'll love that. It's like a little filler leaf. And here we go. Again, we're pushing on the chisel edge again and lifting, pushing and lifting. And then here you're barely touching it and pulling. Okay. Now here's a geranium leaf. Or there's other leaves you can use it for. But I use this a lot for geraniums. You stand up on the chisel edge. You push very hard. You're going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle all the way around like a shell design and lift. Now what I, I should start right here, that would look better, wiggle, 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 and lift. Now when that dries, you can go back and put that little pink vein in by doing that same stroke, just with the, the pink in it. All right, and this is a fruit leaf. I put a lot of yellow in this one with the green. I'm going to start on the chisel edge, push, turn the green to the point, and stand up. See, that's a really nice smooth stroke, and we're not doing any wiggles in that, because fruit leaves are a little smoother than others. And then that's basically coming on this side and ending up that leaf of the completed by pulling the vein through the middle. Okay, now the last thing on here <coughs> is using the chisel edge. And we're going to use that chisel edge standing up, slightly lifting the lighter edge, and dragging the last green bristles. Same thing here when we're doing the grass. We're going upward little strokes, dragging the little green bristles with a lighter color going away from you, whether it's coming this way or that way. Now, wasn't that fun? I know that you're going to be able to get these strokes. It's going to be so easy. You get the teacher's strokes right at home with you. I want you to practice, 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 and you're going to love my one-stroke technique. And let me know how much you like it because it's so much fun. And share it with your friends. Thank you.